We're going down to Southern Utah to pick up two big, big excavators. These machines haven't run for like 10 plus years, just like some of this other equipment we've been picking up lately. But there's two of them and they're identical. I know they've been sitting for a while. This one was the last one that ran. Kager Mountain Dew. Right there. Mm. The crank crank dance. Oh, <laughs> uh, it was running good for a second and then all of a sudden it just quit. Sounded like either the engine seized or one of the injectors stuck wide open because it just started pouring black, uh, black smoke out, which means one of the cylinders probably getting way too much fuel. The tracks weren't working even when we did have it running. The only component that was working was the boom was going up and down, uh, the bucket was leaking, tracks weren't moving, and it wouldn't even swivel. So either way, what we're gonna have to do is probably pull the gears out of the tracks, and then I gotta run down to town and grab a loader. So when I originally uh, made the deal to buy these machines, um, the owner, uh, Paul, was like, hey, yeah, we got a loader down here that you can help uh, push these machines around and put, get them on the trailer. The problem is, Paul didn't know that we were coming down to actually take the machines today. He thought we were just coming down to get a, get a lay of the land. And I was like, no, no, we're here, trucks, trailers, we're ready to rock and roll. So the loader is a solid like 20, 30, 40 miles away, um, and it's a big machine. And the only way to transport it is by using one of our low boys. So I'm gonna head into town, grab it, and bring it back here. Meanwhile, you guys are gonna pop it on, into neutral. You know, you're gonna pop it into neutral. Take the old gears. Yep. <laughs> now we just play the game of brutes moving each other around. Loader versus uh, excavator. This is where things will probably get really entertaining. Well, it's been good. It's been fun. <laughs> That's about all I know. No, we're uh, we're gonna get them loaded one way or another. Funny thing about situations like this, when you're in the middle of them, you're like, oh man, oh man, you know what's going on, what's going on. But you always, the day always ends, the job always gets done. You just don't know how it's exactly gonna get there, but you always do. Always happens. So we'll be there in no time. Then break two. Yeah. Oh, Dave, you are the man. <laughs> One down, 75,000 more to go. Hunter, oh, oh. Right here, so that yeah, off that. Small Allen's. Yeah. Front cover is just... I got the, them talking about it. Segment one, Diesel Dave. Park the machine on a level surface. No, it's I know one. you diesel brothers aren't paying much attention. Scene one, act one. <laughs> takes off the wrong bolts. Loosen and remove scene two, all sit against the track. Pass on the planetary on cover to, three. to the hub. I can read the script last night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> crazy thing about what we're doing is who knows whose stuff we're using. So, some of you out there probably are trucking, trucking dogs, right? Live the trucks, love the trucks, breathe the trucks, all that. Little. But what I love about my trucks is we use them. I can't stand when people like put together a rig and they're like, all right, now it's just gonna sit here. We're never gonna touch it. We're never gonna use it. So this truck, uh, I don't know. I think I've had it for probably six years now. 
but it it, uh, it originated in Iowa. Uh, was picked up by a guy in Michigan, who uh, who did about half of the half of the work on it. Um, kind of got a good start on it, and then moved on to a new project. So I picked it up, brought it out to Montana, and then started kind of putting my touches on. Of course, put the big can't go anywhere in in the uh, northern states without one of these. Uh, the only place I could find that make them make them for the Australian road trains, hence the uh, <laughs> the old kangaroo blaster. <laughs> The uh, the engine we ended up uh, it was overhauled when I bought it, but it had a bad head on it from the overhaul, so we put a new head on it. Um, engine just runs like a top. So we get back to the site, I've got this giant loader, like I'm pretty amped, this is a big powerful machine. I'm thinking this is just gonna throw these excavators around like toys. All right, now we're in business. We've got the loader over here. Uh, we just barely got back with it. I'm pretty sure the other guys have been working on getting the uh, final drive gears out so the machines will walk freely. Both are in neutral. Both machines are in neutral, so now we just gotta finagle the buckets a little bit. Hey, what's the plan? What do we need to do? Uh, we're gonna try to start tucking the arm on this one, so I'm gonna push on it, see if it'll move. Do we wanna chain it up? Well, I gotta move it first okay. and see. the boom up as much as we can, leave it in the air so that we can get the tractor moved. So the biggest issue that we ran into is obviously trying to find somewhere to hook under the undercarriage of an excavator is tricky. So we grabbed one of our big thick like one inch cables, wrapped it around the body. I go to pull on it and it's not moving. <laughs> And we've got the gears out of the motors on the tracks, so it's supposed to be freewheeling right now, but as I look at the tracks, they're rusted, they're caked full of mud and dirt and rocks, and so I think we're gonna have to literally just like bump and manhandle this machine to be able to free up those locked up tracks. And then, Cable breaks. Hey, hey. I'm talking, this is a thick cable. It might I've be the never, thickest cable we've ever broken. I've never seen a cable like this break. So I'm working the sh out of this loader. Like, I've got all tires spinning, like mm. digging. You hear the pressure relief valve and the hydraulic system just popping off. This loader is like sweating his guts out, uh, trying to move this stupid excavator that's just stuck. Hey, say something nice about it now. Uh, this excavator who that's having a rough we're going through a rough patch in life and yeah. we're here to help it. Thank you. Yes. So finally, we figure out a way to hook chains to each track on the excavator because that's gonna provide us with more leverage with the loader. So as I start pulling backwards, the chain actually starts rolling the tracks. And as the tracks start rolling, there's dirt and crap coming off them like crazy. And just like we thought, they were frozen up just from debris. Yep. So what's the good news is, now the machine's starting to actually roll. So we should be able to push it onto the trailer. And that's exactly what we did. biggest issue that we had with the second uh, excavator was the fact that when they parked it, however many years ago, they kind of kicked Sorry. it to the side. And uh, these motors and these, these swivel motors don't like to spin freely. Like I hooked a loader to it and I was trying to spin it. Nothing. Wait, wait. Okay, we got one machine loaded. Took a little bit of finagling, but we got it. And now we're on the second machine. Second machine is a little bit lighter, I've noticed. This one is rolling much better. Biggest problem we have, see how it's turned? Can't ride on the trailer like that. So we gotta figure out how to get the gear motor right there, a giant gear assembly, to be able to freewheel and turn. And I just tried, and uh, she said, nee, nee, neck time. So we got inside there, 
and actually ended up pulling the big drive gears off of the swivel assembly to be able to get this thing to swivel. And then it was like, Whee! <laughs> literally, Whee! this stupid thing was like so excited to spin <laughs> that I barely bumped it with the loader and it did like a 720. Uh, in fact, it was so sensitive that I couldn't even push it with the machine anymore. I had to hunt or move it by hand. Yep. <laughs> nice work, Hunter. This shouldn't be this easy. <laughs> you see him just hanging on, just dragging his feet, trying to stop it? Take it. You want to stay close, Casey? It does run away on you. What? You want to stay close enough to the counterweight? <laughs> So when it comes to equipment trailers, there's a couple of different types. There's a removable gooseneck style with a little motor, hit a button, the trailer and the truck separate and you can drive the machine on the front. The other type of equipment trailer is the one that um, Jackson has hooked to his cab over and that's my buddy Ryan's trailer. And they're designed to be driven up over the back. So if you have a functioning piece of equipment, it's great. You can drive up, trailer's super durable. The problem is if your equipment doesn't run, getting it loaded on a trailer that tall is tricky. So we dug ourselves a little loading ramp with the loader. So I ended up doing it with the loader, built a nice ramp, got the second machine, pushed over, and literally just pushed right onto the trailer. It loaded perfectly. Feeling like you might not get through it? Yeah. Have a chat with this guy. See what we're gonna do. It. It will raise you up. Raise you up. What I do? I knew we're here the whole time. 
I knew you wouldn't be worried. After finally wrestling with that thing for a couple hours, we get it on the trailer, which you guys, you're not gonna see in the footage of us talking about that because it was getting dark, it was getting late, everybody was getting a little bit tired and hangry. And so it was just like, go time, like go, go, go. At one point, Jack and that Jim came to me, he's like, so what time are we calling it quits? Like, what, at what point are we not taking the second machine home? And I was yeah. like, no, we're taking it. He thought we were past that point. He did, he was ready to leave. Yep. And I was like, no, we're gonna have to do it because we're down here, like to go home and then come back, it wasn't an option. Um, so, but they're gonna really enjoy those. 95% of this video is us trying to get the first excavator. True. And then all of a sudden the second excavator walked itself right onto the trailer and said, I'll go with you guys. Da -da -da. Literally a stiff breeze would have loaded that second yeah. excavator. It was just loose and ready Where'd to go. Which go? Pisses me off because we should have started the day by working on the second excavator because it turns out it's the one that probably had the best chance of running and driving. But at this point, we're done. We're just gonna get loaded and uh, try to get out of here before it gets too dark. We didn't want to kick the field mice out of that. I mean, they're no, they're all living in there. Did it have a lot? Um, so even though the first half of loading was an absolute nightmare, the second half went super smooth. And the only other issue we have now is we have a lot of to take home. Yeah, we do. Like a thousand pounds of in the 10 pound box. Like, can we take on the loader? I would love to take on the loader, but I don't know where to put it. I say, forget this thing, put this roof down. Beauty. <laughs> so my hands are terrible. There we were. The sun has gone down. The tractors are loaded up. We're ready to hit the road when we realize our one friend is still sitting back there in the dirt going, hey guys, what, what about, about me? me? Yep. The Polaris Ranger. <laughs> that ran us around all day is just about getting left I behind. I, I actually had a conversation with Hans where I was like, all right, I guess we'll just send somebody back down for it. There was nowhere for it to go. These machines were so big, they used every inch of the trailer and we didn't bring a trailer behind one of the pickup trucks. So literally we're at the point where we're just gonna have to leave and send somebody to grab it. But then we see a little bit of free real estate. No man left behind. Nope. Right in the front of Jack's trailer, we find this one little patch of real estate, put a couple wooden beams across it, set the Ranger on top, and hit the open road. <laughs> and about 10 feet after we hit the open road, <laughs> the logs have snapped and the Ranger's sitting flat I on the I missed that part. We're sitting at the gas station wondering where these guys are at. And then they show up like 30 minutes later and they're like, yeah, all the, all the, the logs holding the Ranger up. Bro. And the Ranger's sitting like this on. Hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, I got a new tailgate coming for my Ranger. But that's not bad. I mean, all things considered, yeah, that's not bad. I mean, the fact that we got these two massive machines, plus all of our equipment, plus everything, home that same day, that's impressive. This guy's been trying to get these tractors moved for years. And he, everybody who comes and look at him is like, oh, we're gonna have to chop them up, do this, do that. Like, it's a big ordeal. And that's why I was just like, nah, we got this, we'll figure it out. And we did. And he was very, very impressed, I believe. I was impressed. I was impressed. I'm still impressed. So after all is said and done, we get home around 4 a.m. I think. You got home that early? Yeah. What time did you guys get home? Oh, about 5:30. Oh, jeez. What were you doing? No, we got home at 4:30. Where were you guys at? We were gone. Yeah, everybody was gone and unloaded by the time we made. I think. Yeah, you, you guys got home like a half hour after us. Yeah. Not too bad. Nah. Look, we were looking sweet in the peat though. Yeah, you were. No. I'm done. I'm yeah. Here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like I said. When necessary, we're gonna come through and try to put some of this information out there so that you guys can watch this and understand so it's not just a bunch of crazy clips of us, you know, wandering around doing stuff. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this two-part video series because it wasn't intended to be that way. It was just gonna be a one video but ended up being a very long day with lots of footage. So you got two. Hope you guys enjoyed. Guys, uh, one more thing before we go. You wanna do it? Yeah. You ready? Jax! You just did. So you did. So that was supposed to be a shout out to <laughs> to our buddy Jax. I was we were gonna be like, hey Jax, thanks Is for that your help. Wrong? 
That's one way to do a shout out, 100. percent But that wasn't <laughs> necessarily Jax. the way. Okay, My whatever. man Jax. Listen, Jax is a, is like just a the coolest, total stud. one of the greatest guys in the world. Uh -huh. So um, if you get a chance, go ahead and follow his page yep. because he's got some pretty entertaining content, and he is a very talented individual. And something tells me you're going to see him on the vlog again. Yeah, because he's the coolest soon. bearded trucker around. He gave me all these awesome health tips. He gave me some leave-in conditioner for my hair and beard that kept me smelling fresh since the hot pot fire. Mm -hmm. Then he was helpful down south, taught me how to auctioneer, and he's got the coolest cab over Pete ever. Did you not see the auctioneering that Jax was doing? You know that oh, on yeah. the ride, ride home, he taught me how to auctioneer. That doesn't surprise me. I also don't remember. I was going to say, do you want to give a shot? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 80. I think that's it's close. It's just like counting. It is. He practiced for a solid hour on the way home. Something tells me there's a little uh, little connection happening here between but, you and Jack. No, it's good, man. Just, what are you, you talking new, about? You need a new best friend? That's fine. <laughs> Hi, Jack. All right. See ya. Here he comes. Whoa, there he is. Get him. Get him, Hunter. Is that a real footage, or did you yeah, find that online? Yeah, it's spot. You actually got the footage of the rattlesnake. Yeah, I mean, Hunter was pushing it off, too. He poked with the stick. That's right? impressive. I thought you used stock footage. No. Oh, you guys see that impressive. footage of the rattlesnake, right? That we actually saw a rattlesnake, but when we saw the footage, we're like, oh, no, he just got that on the internet. Davis put himself in the lion's den, in the mouth of danger for your entertainment. The line of fire. Everybody in the comments below say thanks to Davis. <laughs> And Hunter. For what? For scaring up a rattlesnake for entertainment. No, Hunter loses any thanks by his equipment operating skills. Break it even on Hunter. <laughs>